So hi there, I'm Rob Telson with BrainChip and I'm responsible for our ecosystem and partnerships. And today I'm just going to talk a little bit about BrainChip. So uh, real quickly, um, BrainChip is the first company to commercialize a neuromorphic AI engine. And we've proven that in silicon in TSMC 28 nanometer. And a little bit more about our company is, you know, we've got about 20 years of AI investment in research and specifically thinking about it um, in a neuromorphic environment. With a very broad patent portfolio and centers of engineering in the US, in France, in India, and an advanced research center in Australia. What gets us excited are announcements such as this, where Mercedes uh, chose to use neuromorphic technology in their concept vehicle, the EQXX, because they could get five to 10 times better power performance using brain chip technology. And where we focus, as you heard earlier today, Zach talked a lot about in the days of IoT and trying to pump information to the cloud, is we focus on the edge because all the data should be processed on the edge. And when we think of the edge, we actually think of the endpoint. When we think of the endpoint, we actually think of the sensors. So when we heard uh, some of my fellow speakers today talk, all I could think about is brain chip because with our technology, which we call Akita, and taking that technology in an IP format and having them design it into what they're currently offering, our AI accelerator can help them achieve not only what they're achieving today, exceeding what they're exceeding uh, what they're achieving today, but help them pave the way for the future. And when we think about the edge, we think about on chip and doing all the processing on the device. And we think about it being extremely power efficient with ultra low latency, um, a very small memory data requirement. Uh, and most important to me is what we call one shot learning. And this is where we start to differentiate. And I'll show you a video in a second in regards to one shot learning. And the other thing, and you've heard some of my uh, counterparts talk about it, it's enabling another layer of security and privacy because you're designing on the device without depending on the cloud and without having a lot of data move back and forth. So key technology um, foundations of, of Akita and our IP is really, the first thing is um, we're pure digital. So you'll hear neuromorphic come up and you'll hear other companies talk about um, analog mixed signal or analog uh, components to their technology. Because we've designed our technology as a pure digital solution, it allows us to take current CNNs that exist today. It allows us to partner with companies like Edge Impulse and for customers such as yourself and future customers such as yourself to take that technology that you've developed or the models that exist today and um, have them work directly onto um, Akita. And when the neuromorphic aspect of it was we combined that, we're talking about the architecture and the algorithms that go with that, we're talking about four key points. We're talking about app memory computation. We're talking about event-based processing. Um, again, focusing on events and not having to worry about non-events. But we're also talking about event-based communication within the MPUs and again, highlighting event-based learning or on-chip learning. So an example of that is, does anyone here like beer? <laughs> perfect. We need beer lovers because there's a couple of beer videos in this, in this presentation. But a perfect example of one-shot learning is, to, is just take a look at this. What we're doing here is we're actually capturing these images of beer bottles. They don't exist in a data set. And by entering them in, we're capturing them. So we already did Corona Premier, and now we're going to do Rolling Rock. And then we're going to do another beer called Birch Beer in a second. As we go through this, um, and then after we do Birch Beer, we're going to do a, a Corona Light. And we're doing that on purpose because we want to trick Akita because the, the labeling between Corona Premier and Corona Light are very similar. And this is a very basic demo, but I think you'll get the picture of it in a second. So now we're going to do, we're going to come back in and bring each one of these bottles into, into play. So we bring the rolling rock in and Akita immediately recognizes it. And then we bring in the birch beer and Akita is going to recognize it. And then we're going to bring in Corona Premier. Akita is going to recognize it. But we bring a Corona light in and it's going to say, hey, this is kind of familiar to Corona Premier. 
So it's toggling back and forth. Well, this is how simple it is when you're doing device personalization to add a second shot, just to provide another layer of accuracy. So you provide that second layer of accuracy for Corona Lite. So we're going to go back in and just make sure it's working correctly. And we go through Corona Premiere, and then we're going to go through Corona Lite. And you can see that it immediately recognizes the difference between the two bottles. And then we're going to come back in, and we're going to blur it a little bit and see, like a human eye, as we focus, is it going to recognize, is it a Premiere or is it a Lite? And it's going to recognize it's a Corona Premiere. Basic demo. But I want you to think about that now when we think of facial recognition, when we think of voice, when we think of vibrations, when we think of taste. Because this is where it gets fun with neuromorphic architecture. And when I talked about Mercedes earlier, here's an example of um, what the future of the cabin and the vehicle is going to look like. We've got three networks that are running simultaneously. One is going to recognize you by face, one is going to recognize you by voice, and one's going to recognize you as individuals are in the vehicle. And the future of that is also going to recognize the gender and recognize the age. Hey, Akita. Aaron, all systems active. Hey, Akita. Todd, all systems active. So what makes this fun is the fact that, again, Todd and Aaron, they didn't exist, right? We captured an image of them in the car, we recorded their voice, and now they're in the, in the system, and Akita can recognize them by face, by voice, and so on. So we're going to see a lot of this in the future when it comes to device personalization, especially in the home and in industrial applications where people are working on the shop floor and in, in our workplace. So, the Akita IP platform is really made up of three components, right? So you have the IP itself, and then you have our software development environment, which plugs directly into Edge Impulse Studio. So you're taking everything you've done in Edge Impulse, you're plugging it into our Meta TF, and the output of that allows you to work with those models in Akita. The second thing is, as I mentioned before, it's silicon proven in our reference SOC. And the third part are the enablement kits that we have available. So we have our design kits available as a Raspberry Pi development kit, um, an x86 development kit, and in PCI uh, board format. So with all of that, you can start using BrainChip's technology today with the Edge Impulse environment. So a little bit more about Akita, what makes it really cool, because I have some more videos to show you, and one more about beer, as I mentioned before. But what we have going on here is the fact that Akita can take in, whether it be vision, voice, smell, vibration, taste, LIDAR, radar, and take that, process it through. And if it's a simple model, yeah, it's going to take it. It's going to process it standalone as an NPU. But if it's really, really complex, as you've heard some, uh, some of my other f counterparts talk about complex uh, networks, we're going to do what everyone else is going to do. And we're going to offload some of that to the host CPU. So it's extremely scalable and flexible on how you use it. So let's have some fun. This is one of, with one of our, our, one of our partners, Prophecy, and using their DVS camera. And what we're showing here is gesture recognition. So again, we were screwing around. We came up. We, we, we learned. We had it learn a couple of different hand signals, such as hand clap and um, roll the arms and air drums and air guitar. And as you can see, um, it's using very little power in order to do this, uh, and it's extremely accurate. And then, one step further, for any of you guys that have floated, haven't floated by the BrainShip booth on the floor yet, please stop by, take a look. Um, this is a, a, a vibration and regression analysis environment where we're basically using a train to highlight what we see as smart infrastructure moving forward, recognizing when there's faults or actual predictive maintenance applications and, and moving forward from there. And again, we have this running here at the show. Um, I didn't want them to bring the train set, but they were, they were bent on bringing it to this Edge Impulse community because they thought everyone would really enjoy it. And as you can see, it's highlighting the difference between an alert, a defect, or something to that extent. The other one we have here at the show right here is with our partner in Viso, where we're doing um, uh, a head pose estimation and emotion recognition. So there's a ton of different emotions on here. You can go by and you can test it out. If you can get your facial expression to show fear, 
about 5% of the people can get their fear face going. So please stop by and, and take a look at that. Um, last but not least, uh, I talked about beer again, so we'll go into beer tasting. So what we're doing here, basically just having a bit of fun, and it's not just about beer, it's about taking uh, the ability to analyze compounds and gases. And with our partner, Oscar Brewing Company in San Diego, what we've done is we've taken some sensors and we're gonna determine the difference between a pale ale and a stout. And as you can see, we're consuming about 6.3 milliwatts of doing this, but we're really uh, analyzing the alcohol content, the glucose content, the sodium content, and pH. And what we're doing here is we're recognizing the stout. And it's, it's, it's again, fun to do it with beer because we all can relate to beer. Uh, but we're really highlighting the fact that there's a lot of things we can do here where because water purification, whether we're talking about gases in the air, um, different types of sensors and products that we can design in the IP to help those sensors recognize a lot of different things that are gonna help us in our environment moving forward. And what I've done so far is I've highlighted voice, vision, taste, smell, and vibration, all within a lightning talk in regards to what we're doing with the Kita's technology today. And that's what gets us excited at BrainChip about what we're doing. And again, highlighting the partnership between what Edge Impulse is doing and what BrainChip's doing, you bring that together, it really enables a ton of opportunities for everyone here and our future customers, uh, mutual customers working together and doing great things. And for those that are interested, we are here, please stop by. And um, you can also take a look at us at www.brainship.com or feel free to email me at rtelson at brainship.com and uh, we can go from there. Thank you.